My name is Ursula. For those of you who don't know me, I'm one of the yoga coaches here. I teach on Saturday mornings at 9 o'clock in Falls Church, and then Sundays at 7 o'clock here. Um, a lot of times when people come to my class, I'll ask how everybody's feeling, and people will always say, this hurts. And so they point to their lower body, and we have to work to define that. What we've seen, though, is a lot of commonalities with people's hips, um, hamstrings, and then quads. So today we'll offer a stretch for your hips, stretch for your quads, stretch for your hamstrings. It's very easy for you to do. We're also going to work to show you some refinements on some of the poses that we traditionally kind of flop into, um, just so that you can learn to get deeper into these poses on your own. In turn, you'll open up your muscles and have greater mobility as an athlete. Sound good? All right, so we have very fabulous Joey here today demonstrating some poses for me. So again, working into the idea of hips, hamstrings, and then quads. We'll start out today with a hip stretch. Um, one of my favorite hip stretches, super easy, is a half split. So half splits is something that people kind of flop into, think that they're working into it, but then wonder why their mobility doesn't change. Um, we'll show you some refinements today on how you can get into that with a little bit more skill and a little bit more technicality and return the investment on your mobility for your time. So Joey, if you want to step your right leg forward to a lunge, we'll start off in a low lunge. So right foot in front of you at a 12 o'clock position right here. Yeah, there you go. All right, so from here, you begin to straighten through your front leg. So straighten your right leg. Hips go back, straighten your leg. There you go. For a lot of crossfitters, hands don't, nice, don't necessarily meet the floor. So from there, what we'll do is we'll grab one block, we'll grab the other block. We'll place this right next to our hips. And our blocks have three different levels. So they've got the shortest level, and they've got the shortest level here, medium level, and then tallest level. A lot of people may need to go for the tallest level. It's totally fine. Nothing magical happens when you reach your hands to the floor. You can play with blocks to get you deeper into this. So pull your hips back and wiggle your front leg out so that your front leg is totally straight. Nice. You're stacking your hips over your knee. So if you see here with Joey, he's got his hips over his knees. But what you'll want to do on this side though is draw your left hip forward and your right hip back. And then from there, reach forward with your chest. Press your chest forward and then bend at your elbows and fold over your legs. Bend your elbows and fold over your legs. Nice. Keep your legs straight. Keep flexing the toes towards your face. Lengthen through your spine. Press your heart forward. And then bend your elbows and fold deeper. Melt your chest towards your thighs. Keep your hips stacked over your knees, even if it means that you don't go as close into it. Take another breath in and breath out. Feel a little different than what you're used to? So Joey, come on off the block for a little bit. And show me how you would traditionally get into this. So if you're just doing this in the gym, a lot of times what we see is people's hips go back closer towards their shins. And they're like, oh my god, this is a hamstring stretch. I can hang out here forever. It's not the case. Get into this with a little bit more support, and I guarantee you, you'll get a deeper stretch out. So from your splits, a really easy thing that you can do is transition right into pigeon. So Joey, why don't you go ahead and return to your lunge. So begin to lift up to your back leg, wiggle your left leg, Wiggle your front heel over towards the opposite, towards the opposite wrist. And you'll wiggle it over to a point where you can just melt down. We can remove the blocks here. Yep, yeah, remove the blocks. Wiggle that down. All right. So a tendency that we have is for people to, uh, for people to have a whole lot of space between one hip or the other. A lot of times, what we see is this hip rolls up. Um, our goal here is to roll that hip down and to give us as much space in the back leg as we can. So a lot of people kind of stop here in the rough form of pose and think that they can hang out here forever. But this doesn't necessarily do anything to help our mobility. What we want to do is refine this pose a little bit more to increase our mobility and increase the investment of your time on your body. So from the rough form of the pose, what we want to do is straighten through the back leg a little bit more, find some space back here. So Joey, if you want to curl your back toes under, lift up for your back knee, wiggle that leg out, there you go. And then press your hips down. There you go. Try it one more time. Curl your toes under. Lift up. Press down. So if you feel any, so if you start to feel any creaking in the front knee, just change the angle of the knee a little bit. Pull that front leg in closer towards the body. If you feel pretty good here, from here, you can begin to lift up through your chest and walk your fingertips out in front of you, as far as you might go. So if that's where you are, it's a great place to be. The thing to note here 
is that you want to drive that supporting hip forward and drive that standing hip towards the ground. There's a lot of space here, no problem. Grab a block, grab a blanket, whatever you've got handy. Place it right there to give yourself the support. So by doing this, by getting into a more refined shape of the pose, you'll be able to open up your hips a little bit more by externally rotating that front hip. In turn, you'll be able to increase your investment of time and your body's mobility. Why spend time on this if it's not going to do anything for you? Take the time to get into pose correctly, and I guarantee you, it'll, you'll feel a world of difference. So the other part of the lower body trifecta is quads. We've done hips, we've done hamstrings. Let's work into a really easy but effective stretch for your quads. So first stage of this is to sit back on your heels. If you're like me and you've got a really cranky knee, stay here, or if this is too much for you, take a trusty block at home that can be a book, place it between your feet, and just sit your hips back. This alone is going to open up the front of your knit, the front of your legs, open up your quads. If you've got the space in your knees and want to go a little bit deeper into this, you can work to separate your feet. So keep your knees close together, Joey, but separate your feet out and roll the flesh from your calves open. So you've got a little bit of space to sit your butt cheeks down onto that. From there, you'll begin to lift up and walk your fingertips back. You'll feel your thighs start to open up. If this feels good, you can drop down onto one forearm. You can drop down onto the other. You can maybe rest your whole back onto the mat. If you see your knees start to lift up like this, just come on out of it. You're getting enough of a stretch as it is back here. So come on back into it for just a moment. Feet are out, knees are touching. Walk back. Yeah, there you go. Still a great stretch. If you look at the pain on Joey's face, you'll see it's actually working. So, really easy stretch that you can do at home, you can do for five minutes, it's gonna make a world of difference with your legs. So what we've done today is unlock the keys of your lower body hurting. So it's not everything, but we've given you effective stretches for hips, hamstrings, and quads. Hopefully with doing this with some precision and a little bit more skill, you'll be able to find a little bit more mobility in your legs and in turn be stronger and more effective as an athlete. Come check out yoga, we're here, about five days a week, love to see you in our class.